Ground effect is another aerodynamic phenomenon that a pilot needs to become familiar with. If a pilot doesn't understand ground effect, it's very difficult to land properly, and it can also be difficult to take off. For example, here we have an airplane that is on the approach to runway 9, and this pilot doesn't understand ground effect, has gotten close to the runway, and is continuing to float without touching down. If we take a look at where ground effect exists, we can see that the pilot has entered ground effect, which doesn't allow for a reduction in airspeed, which doesn't allow the descent. Done properly, the landing looks more like this, where the pilot begins the round out before entering ground effect, allowing for a decrease in airspeed right here, which allows for a descent. And he continues that all the way to the touchdown. Also, on takeoff, if an airplane is overloaded, it may very well take off the runway. However, it may not exit ground effect. So let's take a closer look at what ground effect is. Here we have a cross-section of a wing that's flying well above the ground. We have the top camber, the lower camber, the cord line, and the lift is acting perpendicular to the cord line. Looking at the way that the airflow moves around the wing, we have the lower pressure area here, we have the higher relative pressure area here, and that produces the downwash. Altogether, analyzing the lift that we have, this is the lift acting against gravity, and this is the lift that is producing induced drag. Now let's look at this wing as it flies closer to the ground. You could see that the downwash that was once coming down in this direction is diverted up. What that does to the lift is brings it up more vertically. Because it's more vertical, our induced drag is reduced. Because the induced drag is reduced, our overall efficiency is increased, which sounds like a good thing, but when landing it can make it difficult, and on takeoff it can give uh, the pilot a sense of security that isn't there when they exit the ground effect. Another way to think about this that isn't as accurate as describing the induced drag and the downwash and all this is simply thinking of the wing coming close to the ground and forcing a high pressure area below the wing, kind of like a cushion. So it's forcing this air into one confined area, which produces more lift. Again, it's not accurate, but it's kind of nice to think about it that way. Generally, what a pilot needs to remember about ground effect is that it begins at the same height as the wing is long. As the airplane gets closer to the ground, the amount of ground effect exponentially increases. The length of the wing is here. So that same height, ground effect will begin. So whether the airplane is taking off or landing, it is in ground effect if it's underneath that altitude. And it also gets stronger as the airplane gets closer to the ground. There are airplane builders that have taken advantage of ground effect to create a whole different type of aircraft. This is called a necronoplane. It's made by Russia. And it is not designed to leave ground effect. Because of the increased performance, this airplane is very quick, burns very little fuel. However, for some reason, these airplanes, or I don't know what they are, I guess they're not even airplanes, have never really caught on, other than for recreational flight.